Hi Scrappers, today we're going to be going over keyboards. Uh, I had a customer of mine bring in a pile of keyboards and on the inside of each one of these keyboards sometimes you'll find there's a steel plate in there, sometimes it's just plastic, uh, but in every keyboard you should be able to find uh, two thin pieces of plastic, technically three thin pieces of plastic with uh, silver, uh, a thin sheet of uh, silver uh, going over them. The piece of plastic inside the center is called uh, mylar. It's a silver miler. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, a couple of these and see what we have on the inside. So today we've got a, an old school Dell. That's going to be our first one. Okay, I'll just crack this thing open and see what we have on the inside. Oh. Some of these are a little more difficult to get into than others. Notice this one has the little tabs that make it a little more difficult to get into. Okay, so that one turned out to be a lot more difficult. I had to turn the camera off just so I could pry this thing open. So when we open this thing up, notice we've got a cord here, and it's typically going to be screwed down inside. Sometimes it's easier with a screwdriver, sometimes with the drill. Looks like we've got a few of these. So we'll grab this. Pull out these few screws that we see here. And this, this looks like it's metal, but it's not. It's actually some type of uh, cardboard uh, uh, separator they have inside of there. Now we get down to the board itself. Now this one's a little bit different. This one actually has the steel that I was referring to. It's got a steel plate but this one's actually a full-blown board itself as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the silver mylars I was talking about earlier so this one this one may take a little effort to get off of here okay so as it turns out this one's completely different than most of the other keyboards that we come across uh, and this is a rarity uh, notice how it's got the uh, the steel plate that the keyboard is actually mounted to and then there's a, a big brown board underneath of it. Um, the only thing that we've got on here that's that's really worth any value to us as uh, scrappers is this IC chip right here. So the rest of this, um, I would just throw this into your scrap steel. And, and the rest of this can go off to uh, your, your plastic recycle. We've got the, uh, the copper here. Obviously you want to take that and throw that into your copper. And, and then the plastic itself just goes off to uh, uh, wherever you properly dispose of your or recycle your plastics. There should be, there should be a recycle plastic, or I'm sorry, a plastic recycle uh, in your neighborhood, in your community. Uh, just want to make sure that that is properly disposed of so it does not wind up in a landfill. And then obviously we've got our copper wiring. Make sure that that goes into your copper. And move on to the next keyboard we've got another keyboard here uh, this one actually as far as weight goes it feels about the same weight so hopefully we don't run into the same thing that we did before uh, we should this should be more of a traditional style where it has the uh, the mylar inside of it so we'll go ahead we'll pull the last couple screws out of this Oddly enough, we have another steel plate keyboard. We'll go ahead and cut this off, and we can go ahead and recover the uh, the IC chip that we've got inside of here. But uh, outside of that, I mean, this is just like the other one. Uh, it looks like 
Uh, yeah, well, it looks like we could go through and remove these individual screws that we've got here and see what's on the back side here. This one may be slightly different where we can remove the, the steel plate from the brown board. And as it turns out, it looks like I was mistaken. This one does just have the steel plate and it does look like it is a separate item altogether. So I do get to show you the mylar. So this is the silver mylar that we were talking about. And it's, it's actually three pieces here. The one in the center just acts as a filler piece to keep the, uh, the contacts from touching themselves. And what you want to do when you're going through and doing this, you want to remove the silver piece. This just goes into the trash. These are the pieces that have the actual silver on them, and it's just tracing out the silver on each one of these, but it does add up. As you're going through, uh, and you put this into a solution and it'll remove the silver from it, and then you can uh, uh, precipitate that and uh, get actual silver out of that. So as you're going through keyboards, as they become outdated and uh, uh, people start throwing them away, there is still value inside of there. Uh, you've got the plastics, which obviously you want to make sure it goes to the appropriate place. Uh, this one in particular, it's got the uh, the steel plate on the inside, and it's got the uh, the silver mylar. So put that in your scrap steel, put this in your mylars. Just hold on to it. Some people hold on to these. Some people will uh, they'll sell them off. You can find buyers of these. Uh, uh, not sure exactly what the market is on that, but uh, I know there are people out there doing all sorts of refining all over the world. So if you're in if you're in the United States, you should be able to find somebody who would uh, be willing to purchase these. I hold on to these uh, so that one day I can go through the refining process and uh, it's actually something I'm really excited about. Uh, I've not done anything like that before but I'm watching several videos, I've been talking to several people. Uh, obviously safety is going to be the biggest concern because you are working with uh, uh, toxic materials, or not toxic materials, but uh, uh, real strong acids that are going to be uh, putting off toxic fumes. So. But this is what you're looking for. Uh, every keyboard should have two of these. Some of them are going to be just the uh, the plain silver like this one. Some will have uh, a, a darker color coating that's on the outside. You do want to process those differently from what I understand. Uh, for me, I just throw them all in the same pile and when it is when it does come time to process, uh, hopefully I've done enough research on it, uh, both how to what the process is, how to do it, as, as well as the, uh, the safety concerns and make sure that it is being done safely. Um, if you're brand new, I wouldn't recommend diving in and processing things right away. Make sure you do the research on it. Make sure you understand what it is you're working with because there are some pretty significant risk factors with that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a couple different examples of keyboards. We've got uh, we've got a little pile over here, and um, the majority of them are going to be just regular plastic where it has this on the inside. Some of them may have the uh, the steel plates, but that's the basics of keyboards. Um, make sure you separate your copper, throw that into a separate pile so you get your value for that. Um, obviously your silver mylars and and again I can't stress enough make sure your plastics go to the right locations. Make sure they go to a proper recycle center or if there's a company that uh, that, that buys plastics. I, I know that in my area there's a company that buys plastics but you have to come in with uh, a large amount of it so uh, just make sure it goes to the right location. Uh, we certainly don't want to see any of this stuff going into a landfill. Anyway, uh, keep scrapping, have a great day, and uh, uh, keep up the good work.